All right, hey, this is Sam Welker with thinkparticle.com, and today we're going to be talking a little bit about net rendering. So, first of all, you need to understand what net rendering is. Net rendering is when you are going to be using a set of computers, not just one computer, but multiple computers, to render the same project or projects. Um, say you have a scene file that you need to do a render from, and you need it to be done quicker. And you have access to, say, three to five computers. You can hook them all up together and install the net rendering clients and server and, excuse me, uh, render on all of them at the same time. And if you have the computers and the proper license of Cinema 4D and you're not doing this and you have the time, you probably should. Um, it is a lot faster. It's not perfect for every render but it makes it a lot easier when you have those big deadlines. Um, and it's great for, say, a test render. So what you need is uh, either Cinema 4D Broadcast, Visualize, or Studio. Prime does not allow net rendering, just a heads up. Broadcast allows you three net render stations, three nodes, three clients, um, three computers rendering at the same time. So does Visualize. Studio allows you as many as you want to hook up. Um, you could have 2,000. Um, you could have 100,000 if you had the money for that many notes. <laughs> um, but I have only two set up at the moment because that's how many computers I have. Um, what you need is to install Cinema 4D the way you normally do. And I have R14 right here. And what you do is you install it, and then you install what is called the NetRender server. So after you put in your IP address... Um, which I'm not going to show you because I don't want to show off my IP address, or not my IP address, the serial number. Um, once you put in your serial number, um, you will hit uh, next, and it will tell you you can install Cinema 4D, or you can install NetRender Server or NetRender Client. Now, this, I don't believe, is in the demo, um, but if you have a full commercial copy of, uh, a full copy, um, of Cinema 4D, um, you can install the NetRender server and the client. So you're going to need to put the server on the computer that's actually going to host the files. Um, if you have a server, an actual server, say at your workplace, you're going to need to put the server on the server. Then you're going to need to make sure the client is installed on all of the computers that are going to be rendering. So um, in my case, I have the client put on my laptop and on my old HP tower. And I have the server on my laptop, which is actually the host computer for both of these computers. I have an Ethernet running from my laptop to my uh, tower, which I'll show you guys another time. Um, and what it does is um, it will allow you to... Uh, um, first of all, I can steal Internet from my laptop and put it onto my computer because I don't have a Wi-Fi card. Um, and I can do other things like file sharing, and it's very useful. Um, and all you have to do is go into your system preferences and go to sharing and enable file sharing, and then you pick specific folders. Um, I also won't be showing you that specifically today, but if you have any questions and need help with that, just hit me up on Twitter or email me, sam at thinkparticle.com. So now that you've installed all of these, you need to set it up. Now, I'm going to show you this right here. I'm not going to actually show you all of the addresses and everything in the password, but um, what you need are um, the IP address, the port number, and the password, and that is for the server. You need to set all of these settings, and this is just how I have mine set up. You need to go to the folder that you're going to do the network rendering from, and I use users, shared, and net renders as mine, and that is where both of my computers can access it. So you need to make sure every computer can access that folder, and it's just a convenient spot for me. So I'm going to hit cancel so that I can have all of these restored, actually. And, um, and I have the net render client right here. And you're going to go into the settings right there, and you're going to set the um, IP address of uh, the server, and you're going to set the port of the server. Then you're going to set the IP address of the client, which is in this case the same, and the IP address or and the port of the client. Um, and uh, in my case, I just picked a random port, uh, 1993 for the clients and 1992 for the servers. Um, and when you have that already, um, you have your uh, your site, uh, your network renderer set up. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to your IP address, then you're going to do a colon, um, it's going to look like this, uh, number, 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 dot, number, 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 dot, number, number, dot, number, number, 
um, is your IP address. Then you're going to do a colon, and then you're going to do four numbers. That's going to be your port. Then you're going to go to index.html. That part you can leave out because if you just go right there, it'll take care of it for you. So, um, and then you're going to hit enter, and then you're going to go ahead and make sure you create a new job. And once you create that new job, it will give you a name of a job. In this case, I have Falling Rocks. And you have to upload all of your files. In this case, um, I have Falling Rocks. And I'll show you how to actually save these files in a convenient way to upload them. So you can open Falling Rocks. You can open all of your textures. You need to make sure everything that you bring in that isn't actually part of Cinema 4D um, is accessible. And if it is under the folder and it's not being recognized as it should, like textures, you don't always have to manually put them in but sometimes you will. And if it's not automatically recognized, you're just going to have to um, deal with it and put all of these in. Um, I had some bugs earlier with it and it wasn't working, so I just have to manually put these in. Then you hit upload. I've already done that though, so they are right there. And then when you have that done, you're going to be able to say start and it will use your clients. And I'll show you that in a little bit. We're going to go back to Cinema 4D and set up a, an actual um, uh, scene file. So we're going to look at two of these. Um, Let's go back to this one and turned off that. Okay. So Falling Rocks is the name of my scene file. And I've got a bunch of these rocks, and they all have these, uh, and, and these are some big rocks, right? Um, and they all have these textures on them. You can see a preview of the texture right here. And that's a pretty drastic um, example. If we just hit render, it's actually only about two centimeters that it um, extrudes. So I can show you as it goes. It's going to render real quick, and I can show you the scene. And this is what it's going to render. And rendering isn't exactly fast. This just takes care of more computers rendering, and it'll render faster because of that. It doesn't mean your renders are going to jump in speed a lot per render, per rendered image, but it will render more images at once. And I'll show you that a little bit in, in a little bit. Um, and you can see these spheres on the Progressive Pass 1 have these nice textures on them from cgtextures.com. I'm really happy with it. And they roll down, and uh, what happens is they roll down up to the camera frame. That's it. Um, and uh, that is currently what I have in the net render. Um, everything has to be cached. What you can do is go to Dynamics. And uh, by the way, yes, this is at 48 frames a second. If you notice anything weird about this, um, I did that just for fun. So, just for kicks. Um, you can go to click bake, and anything that is time-based, if you cannot scrub through this timeline and just um, have everything go forward and back and forward and back, you need to cache it. Uh, the tracer object, almost anything MoGraph should be cached. Um, uh, dynamics need cached. Now, if you can go into MoGraph and you have things... Uh, say a random effector that can that that might not need to be cached, but say the delay effector, um, if it's time based, you might need to cache that because um, these are going to have like say image eighty rendered on this computer and image one twelve rendered on the other computer. That's how it's going to work. It's going to